Good morning, everybody. You're watching Walking and Talking with Phoenix, and uh, it's a beautiful day. I mean, I'm above the ground, right? Can't really complain. So, just came from the Esplanade. I'm on my way to work. It's about 6.30 in the morning, Thursday. Uh, I don't know, I think it's like the 15th or something. And today, we're going to be talking about a movie I watched last night with my dear pop, uh, Captain America. Uh, I don't mean my pop is Captain America. I mean, that's the movie that we watched, was Captain America. Um, it was interesting. Interesting to say the least. I mean, I'm not too big on the American propaganda. And I went into this movie expecting just a whole lot of tripe. And over the, over the top, you know, wankification. And there was a lot of wankification and huge blockbuster moments. But the storyline wasn't as cliche and undesirable as I expected it to be. It was actually a pretty, pretty interesting ride and touched on uh, some, you know, it touched on, on, on a theme which I've been waiting for a while for a movie to do, uh, namely that of the Illuminati and the whole New World Order conspiracy, right? Um, I'm not going to go into the details of it. I don't want this to be a spoiler in any way. You know, the, the basic idea is, is that there is a secret alliance of powerful individuals across the board, across the world, working in secret underneath the normal, you know, apparatus of the worldwide you know, governments and statism in general. And that these few powerful men and this very special collective of people have a much greater motive of their own, namely to unify the world under a one world government or a new world order and uh, do you have complete control and dominion over all the little men which, uh, which are under their thumbs. And that was the basic idea and Captain America gets his, himself and his little shield in there and he shields off all the injustice and deals with these mofos. So, you know, it was interesting, it was cool. I enjoyed it, worth every penny. Um, and I thought it interesting and it got me thinking because a few years ago, a few years ago I used to read into all these conspiracy type things. It was just interesting to me, you know. I gave it a, a bit of a squiz here and there in my spare time. And the idea of a new world order interested me. I mean, why wouldn't it? I mean, it's something which would not just affect me personally, but something which would affect the whole world collectively. So of course it took... You know, to me it was a significant issue if it was true, if there was any truth to it. And that's where my research began, was to figure out where the truth was and separate that from all the bullshit which usually surrounds any, you know, matter which is not so clearly communicated out to everybody. Matters which are repressed. It's hard to figure out the truth about them. And I did a lot of research and I did enough I did enough to sustain my interest instead of just in, dismissing the whole theory and pushing it to the side. So obviously there was a lot of interesting things, but um, but anyway, I ended up leaving it after a while because it got a bit depressing, you know, to think of all the ways in which they have control over me and your and everyone's lives and our children's lives. and. Even though we have this illusion of control and this freedom and movement of rights and association and whatnot, really it's all within their maze and it's all within their game. So I stopped looking into all of that stuff, stopped taking it so seriously. I thought, you know what, fuck it. Since I can't change it, since I have no control on this whatsoever, I may as well just live within the confines of this maze, live within the rules of this game, and try to play the best hand I can, even if it's a shit hand compared to what. I could have if we all lived in a world of equality, all resources and, and rights were distributed equally. So, I found it very interesting um, to see a movie that was about on this and I thought, you know, if this was a genuine conspiracy, they wouldn't produce a movie about it surely and, and put these ideas in everyone's head. I mean, the powers that be simply wouldn't let it be so. 
But maybe, if it, it was truth to a theory of a new world order and a secret board of people, maybe it would be a good idea to have movies produced about, about them. Exactly. Maybe they can even call the movie Illuminati. And that way, if anybody ever talks about them and, and tries to be credible about it, one could easily just say, well, hey, you've been watching too much Captain America. Oh, you know, there's, there's always that thing. Like, the best way to hide something is out in the open and under people's noses. And then when they sniff, nothing smells as suspicious. And it's all just fun and games, right? But who knows whether there's truth to it, and who knows how far and how deep that truth runs. You know, so much information to look through. And at the end of the day, with conspiracies, is anyone can make sense of anything, they can connect the dots, and they can make any argument, any theory, look plausible if they try hard enough. You know what I mean? So it's a very difficult uh, realm to be in, to, to be dealing in. But uh, one thing I did want to say is that, you know, in, a lot of the time people do talk about this kind of stuff. Everyone starts jumping up and down with the whole conspiracist thing. Um, and a lot of the time there are conspirational overtones and maybe the people are a bit neurotic and paranoid or whatever. Granted. Um, but a lot of the time, you know, a lot of issues are put forth which are logical and whatnot. And even though they don't amount to any big picture conclusion of what the actual truth is, there are still many cases that are a little bit suspicious, right? People put forth in the best way they can and they just instantly get piled on that conspirational pile of bullshit. Right? No one takes them seriously. So, if there was any point today, today's segment, I guess that would be it. Is I think it would be wise not to fall into the habit of dismissing things because it's not on the newspaper or not on the news. Simply because there happens to be a lot of bullshit associated with, with that same stuff, with the same theories. And I think we should look at all information on its own merit. I mean, here's one way you can look at it. One could say, well, well, there's, a, there's a secret conspiracy by these guys that go to Bohemian Grove once a year and dress in robes and worship a massive owl and do ritualistic fake sacrifices in order to further some secret fucking objective for total world domination, right? One could look at it like that. And that does sound a little bit crazy, doesn't it? Or you can look at it in a different light and you can say, well, Life is business, right? Life is business. And in business, you know, it's all about maximizing profit, right? And mi minimizing expenses. And, you know, it, and the principle is you maximize profit at the expense of anything else, right? So even if that means at the expense of the environment, even if it's at the expense of people, you know, and you've literally got to invade lands and kill off a lot of innocents just so you can procure yourself some oil or whatever resources is top dollar at the time. So business is profit and the world is, and our lives is business, you know. If you look at a little number on your birth certificate, chuck in the stock exchange, you will find your own name because technically you are a human resource and you're an asset owned either by the queen or by your country. Kind of like stock is owned by each farm. You look at all the different continents on the map and in a way you're just looking at different farms right everyone's own it's all about trade it's all about getting the most productivity out of the cattle and out of each individual cow so to speak so but even if we don't look at, look at it too deeply just look at the world as business fundamentally people will make really fucked up cruel decisions that which adversely affect people's lives adversely affect the environment to maximize profit because that's the priority above everything else. That's the world we live in. And you'd have to be pretty bloody ignorant to not see it that way. Um, so lo looking at on that basis, right? Then moving away from the idea of guys in robes, worshiping owls, secret plot, take over the world, evil ominous doom, all right? Which they actually do do. They actually do dress up in robes and worship owls and burn fake bodies and chant and shit. And I'm talking presidents and tycoons top figureheads and power you know, people at the top of their game in all industries um, meet up in secret in Nevada once a year, I think it's July 11 um, or May 11 
to, to, yeah, it's like 2,000 men, no women included, to have secret discussions about something. And this, is, this has been admitted by various uh, prime ministers and officials, uh, presidents, I should say. And there's nothing, there's nothing secret about it. There's nothing conspiratorial about it because it's been admitted as fact. Um, but they've got their own story as to why they meet up in secret. And the only reason they revealed it and admitted it in the last century is because Alex Jones busted in there, this American conspirational whore, busted in there with a camera and exposed them and caught them all in their nice little KKK-like robes, multicolored, doing their thing. Which is pretty weird. Like, I wouldn't entrust my babysitter to mind my child if I knew that they dressed up in robes, worshipped massive owl statues, chanting and laughing ominously while burning fake bodies. Or who knows if they're fake all the time, right? Who knows? So, if you look at the idea that it's all about business and these men meet up in these woods once a year from all over the world, it's not just one place, to discuss whatever it is that they discuss, it would make sense that they're probably discussing business, right? And the fact, you know, you've also got trilateral commission meetings, all sorts of secret meetings that go on where there's no transparency. And if you even go near these woods of Bohemian Grove in Nevada, you know, black helicopters, I'm talking Humvees coming down, guys with guns, you know, it's very hard to penetrate that perimeter. It's very lucky that Alex Jones did so. I think they've tightened up tenfold their security since then. Um, so they're probably there to discuss business as well as all these other places they do. And you have to imagine for it to be so secret, for it to involve all these powerful and elite from across the world, that it's, there's got to be some bigger picture or some bigger plan, right? Some bigger big business plan that they're working towards and that they're collaborating on together. And these, like I said, are people from different countries, different powers of position, prime ministers, presidents, you know, bishops. So one must think, okay, well, what is this plan? What could this plan possibly be about? And this is just common sense thinking. This isn't going by what's been said in all the conspiracy sites. This is just thinking you get a bunch of businessmen together across the world, all this power, more money than they could possibly spend in their own lifetime, right? Unless they were extremely charitable and wanted to share uh, with the rest of the world. And you think, what, what could they possibly, possibly want that they don't already have? Now, the tendency of mankind is to want more, right? Just to want more. We're very greedy creatures like that. We like to grow, become more powerful, consume more, do more, and have more freedom, be available to do more things, right? More, more, more. And if you've already got everything you need, all the money, you know, I think the next thing that you could possibly get is power and control. Then that's next on the on the ladder. Um, it's like Maslow's pyramid, you know, self-actualization's at the top once you got the base needs covered. Maybe for these few elite with all this power already and all this control already, maybe the next step for them on the pyramid is actualization for everybody of their own dream or fantasy or idea of how the world should be. Maybe that's the next step up. Maybe that's what they're discussing. Maybe it isn't really such a far-reaching idea, such a conspiracy theory. Maybe it shouldn't even be under the category of conspiracy theory to consider that men from across the world, businessmen, might be meeting up in secret to discuss secret business. Business which isn't revealed to the people, nah. Business that people can only stab at and sometimes only you know hit, hit accurately here and there, you know? And maybe, maybe it is about maximizing profit, maximizing control, you know? And if you look at it in that light, it starts making a bit more sense that really, I think it would be easier to manage a world if it was under, you know, already I do believe there already is a new world order. I think that's like the devil, you know, the devil tricks you into believing he's Christ. I mean, really, he's the devil, you know, and he tricked you into believing in a false sheep, false shepherd. I think we're already being guided by false shepherds. There already is 
the, the devil already has us in the palm of his hand, palm of his claw. And I think the New World Order is already in effect. I think it's just unnamed and it's not as cemented, but the framework is basically there and we're already operating within it. If you look at it, the world as being in one giant corporatocracy made up of many corporations, and they're the ones that really have power over the elections, people, not you, all right? Doesn't matter which side that you choose. I saw a picture once of a cow and a war between it, and it had two different ways that you could vote on each side, liberal democracy. And either way the cow chooses to go, it still goes to the slaughterhouse. And that's the point, is that it's not the people and the puppets that you vote for, but it's the people with the power and the pushes behind them. The people that push their own agendas and their own ideals through the puppets, through these voice boxes that just speak their demands and speak their words and legislate laws to favor corporations and businesses. You know, all sorts of laws, laws regarding uh, war and what's okay to do now in, on foreign land under certain protocol when really the aim is just to procure, like I said, more resources, more oil, you know? Ever since 911, we set like a new standard now where we can just set up a false flag attack and then go in and invade a country under some false pretense. Now though, whoops, while we're here, we may as well just mind this business over here. It really isn't our business, well, it wasn't our business until now, because we got our greedy little mitts on it. And that's how it is. Um, maximize profit at the expense of anything else. So I think there's already a new world order. I think there's already, in a way, a one world government. It's still, you know, compartmentalized into different groups. And they're not all completely on the same page, but they're on the same page enough. And the amount of uh, trade uh, partnerships, unions that are being formed now recently with Tony Abbott, Japan and, uh, and Australia, this new exchange partnership, and all these others, it's really just narrowing the divide and bridging all the gaps and drawing all of these corporations and all these different farms closer together so that it's more efficient and more easy to manage, which cuts down on time and costs in that respect and maximizes profit. The easier it is to run a business and a worldwide business made up of many smaller businesses, each supporting each other, each helping each other out and learning to each other and whatever they do to keep each other floating. The big guns, you know. They, they might, through their spokespeople, through their prime ministers and presidents and people and propaganda, they might give off this idea that they're opposing each other you know, but a lot of the time it's a stage play to keep people distracted, to keep them from looking at the real ball that's in roll, and rolling effect. And that's that there's a lot more partnership going on than there is defiance of each other. Sure, there's more, there's still mistrust. There's always going to be mistrust. And that's why everyone keeps stockpiling weapons. Because really it's a matter of, okay, we're in this together, but if you fuck me over, I got all these fucking WMDs and nukes, I can fuck you up, man. Don't you even think about it, you know? You gotta keep each other in check. E even though you're, you're playing the same game with each other, I still can't com completely trust each other. Because that's what power does, it corrupts. And who knows, any second, someone else on that same board with you on the same table might just want a little bit more power all of a sudden and throws everything out of balance when they try to steal your seat. So, there is that. But like I said, I believe that the, the gaps are being bridged. And I think there's already a one world government on a corporato in, the, in the corporatocracy on that level. And that through that, all of their smaller constituent illusions of government and voting rights and legislation and law, regulation in general, just, it bleeds through the corporatocracy and, and their motivations. So, I think the only, I don't know, I don't really see how it could be any more of a one, one world government when all of the different businesses, you know, are pretty much owned by the same five major corporations. There is really not that much separation, you know. And these guys are the ones with the ball in their hand and with the power and the decisions that they make 
that hold the biggest sway in your life more than anyone you see on your screens. People with the real power you would never see on your screen, if hardly ever, and that's for a good reason. They don't want you knowing who really has power, because then this whole thing wouldn't work, this whole illusion, this whole little game people are playing, combining a fear and then relieving their fear through gratification and cheap satisfaction, or distraction, repression, pharmaceutical drugs. You know, I don't necessarily believe that it's all necessarily about doom and gloom and worshipping big hours because, I don't know, it's like work for the devil, quite literally. And to me, none of that stuff really matters. It's still a bit weird and freaky. None of it really matters when you just look at what is. And it's obvious what is. Anyone with open eyes, even 911, you see the capacity that these fools can go through to achieve their aims. There is more than enough evidence now for an open shot case that 911 wasn't all, all due to the Americans being an inside job, but there was definitely collaboration there. There was definitely an awareness of the events that went down that fateful day, which went down and was negotiated by all the parties involved, including American officials. It was negotiated to go down so they could act as a pretense for reducing people's rights, people's freedoms, and invading their space even more so, and, and really just limiting us a lot more quickly. And I think it provided a lot of acceleration to their plans and allowed them to make some very big, bold moves, which we wouldn't otherwise let them do unless we were in such a state of disarray and fear. And these knights in shining armor were promising, promising us salvation and a way out. So when you're on your knees, you know, it's hard to really walk nor run away or walk against somebody and push against someone in defiance. When you're on your knees, it's easier just to nod your head this way or nod your head that way. And either way, it doesn't really have much effect. It doesn't really matter, you know? Anyway, that's today's food for thought. That, you know, we should look at the state of the world. We should look at the simple fact that business reigns supreme and that all businesses are linked across the board, across the world, and that maybe potentially, just possibly, if not probably, they all do meet in secret and openly to discuss shared agendas that will mutually benefit all that are involved, except the little man. It's not really that far-fetched, is it? <laughs>